Hi, welcome back. Photographing at night isn't new. Alfred Stieglitz was doing it over a hundred years ago and Todd Heider is doing it today. Night photography produces challenges that are not present while working during the day, but it also offers up opportunities for creating otherworldly images because of the artificial light sources. Photography is dependent on the camera, which allows only three options for us to adjust the amount of light falling on the sensor or on the film plan. To increase the light, we can either increase shutter speed, open up apertures, or to a limited extent adjust the ASA, or in the case of analog, vary the film speed. We can also freeze the scene with flash, as well as mix the ambient and artificial light sources. Videos on the technical aspects of night photography are all over YouTube, so that isn't the point of this video. Instead, I'm interested how photographers use the unique characteristics of the night to create exceptional images. I'm going to look at four photographers who've taken on these challenges and have developed their own visual language. George Brassai's revolutionary night photography from the 1930s, as well as three contemporary photographers whose work stands out for me. They say that the camera never lies, but it can stretch the... George Brassai moved from Hungary to Paris in 1924 and became part of an influential group of Hungarian immigrants who went on to make a great impact during the interwar period. His mentor was his famous countryman, Andre Cates. Brassai was probably an insomniac because he spent most evenings roaming the streets of Paris and photographing the things that he saw. He developed an intimate style as he focused on his fellow night owls, young lovers, prostitutes, workers, as well as gatherings in cafes and bars and dance halls. He was also a sculptor, so he mixed with all the top artists of that time, like Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali and Henry Matisse. Because he was well connected, he was able to move effortlessly between high society and the seedier sides of life. Once he had discovered his subject matter, he got himself a tripod and a Voigtlander 6.5 by 9 cm camera. The camera took glass negatives that were so heavy that he could only carry 20 at a time. So you have to be really precise about what you're shooting if you are limited to 20 images per night. There was no rapid fire or automatic bracketing in those days. Sometimes he would employ an assistant who would hold a flash which burnt magnesium flash powder. I'm giving you all this detail because it's important to recognize how skilled one had to be during that time to achieve the images that he did. When you study his photographs, you can see that he often combines light sources. Apart from flash, he's drawing on the glow of street lights, as well as reflected light, like that bouncing of buildings or water. He particularly liked taking photographs when there was mist, or when it was hazy after a rainstorm. This added to the romantic or mysterious feel that one can see in much of his work. Todd Heider also favors this type of situation in order to create mood. Brassai wasn't just documenting, he was building a whole new language of nighttime photography. He was really versatile and he would switch between taking more journalistic type shots of people and then working on carefully composed stylized scenes of Paris. You can see from these how aware he was of line and form and texture. His photographs were very different from Cartier-Bresson's, who also did a lot of work in Paris. His are more whimsical compared to the precise, decisive moments that Bresson captured. When Bresson was photographing people, his subjects were not only aware of him, but they would often collaborate with him to produce informal moments. 
He published his photographs in a book called Paris at Night and it was a huge public success. His friend and writer Henry Miller wrote, Brassais is a living eye. His gaze pierces straight into the heart of truths in everything. So night photography could have been all wrapped up by the 1930s. Brassai had seemingly done everything and done it brilliantly. But things never stand still. Digital and colour opened up new vistas for photographers. The night landscape is filled with neon coloured lights and other unexpected light sources. Urban landscapes can sometimes offer too many light options and one has to look carefully in order to restrict the range. Otherwise you land up producing images that are just commentaries on multiple light sources. I'm now going to look at three photographers that have made an impact working at night. Magnum photographer Patrick Zachman was recently inspired to explore the Chinese nightlife while he was photographing in that country. When he was working there in the 1980s and 90s, the society was very restrictive and there was very little nightlife. But as the culture opened up, he found that the once secretive night spots had become more visible. He noticed that the drab, grey urban environments took on the colours of the night and became attractive. He watched how people's personalities seemed to transform as they moved from the restrained conformity of their day jobs to the uninhibited freedom of bars and clubs. He wanted to create a vision of China showing this transformation from the monotony of the Mao suit to something that was bold and individual. His process of working at night has since expanded into other environments, but this activity has allowed him to shift further and further away from reportage and more towards impressionistic or let's say the art end of documentary. The lights, the shops, the bars came and, uh, and as a photographer, of, of course, I have been immediately attracted by these atmospheres and I did this series which is not journalistic anymore. It's about light, it's about color, it's about atmosphere. I tried actually as a foreigner, as the outsider, because we photographers, we are always uh, actually outsiders and we try to get into a world. Um, I try to get into the Chinese world, get closer to their way of thinking, which is very different from ours. Halpin's work is mainly centered in the US. He worked for about 15 years in his hometown of Buffalo. And he also explored Los Angeles, focusing on the surreal and the strange. One could probably describe his pictorial language as a combination of documentary reportage with poetic surrealism. He doesn't create a narrative storyline. His books are more of a stream of consciousness or a maze of elements that entices the viewer to feel what he's experiencing. When I drift through his images, I get the feeling that I'm looking at William Eggleston photographing on acid.
third choice of photographer is a Russian called Vlad Treshik. He moves about in this extremely cold Siberian environment at night, seeking out unconventional beauty. The landscapes that he moves about in have a feeling of overall neglect and decay. He has a passion for cars and almost always includes one in his scenes. He uses an Olympic OM-10, choosing to shoot analog for the raw, unpredictable results that it produces. He takes advantage of how the night transforms the gloomy spaces into something that is poetic. He's drawn to images that combine elements of nostalgia and futurism. Working at night allows him to discover a tranquility that is unavailable in the city during daytime. He views his photographic practice as a ritual of reclaiming peace in his everyday life. He's learned to work with snow, aware that it softens the harshness of a scene by covering distracting details. Light sources can also reflect off the surface, or it can take on the soft hues of more diffused light. Flipping through his images, I get the feeling that I'm watching a slightly dystopian movie in which the world got it wrong. We aren't going through global warming. We accidentally slipped into another ice age. These three photographers are exploring their night environments in different ways but they are all working with the unexpected variations of light that are unique to night photography. So instead of settling down tonight with a beer and watching TV, grab your gear, head out around your neighborhood and see what it has to offer, and maybe what it inspires you to say. Thanks for watching, feel free to share any of these videos, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.